Education to order. Uh, if I could ask everyone to stand, please, and uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, if I could ask for a roll call, please. Stephen Arthur? Here. Here. Alex Dilley Holly? Here. Pat Grady? Here. Karen Lundstedt? Here. Ellen Maurer? Here. Bill Rapsler? Here. Okay, so we have everybody this evening. Great. Um, all right, so the agenda this evening, um, we will uh, first have a public hearing to consider uh, a proposal to waive school holidays. Um, there is uh, then a brief president's report. We'll have updates. This is the final update? One more after this, right? Okay. Next, the final update from uh, this group of student board representatives, which we look forward to. Um, superintendent's report. Uh, we'll open it up for public comment if anybody would like to speak. Uh, we will approve the consent vote agenda, have updates from program and personnel, as well as facilities and finance. Um, no update on property. Seat all. Brief update. Okay. And nothing from the Illinois Association of School Boards. We will be convening an executive session this evening. Uh, and I believe we will be taking action at the end of that executive session. Um, and uh, that should be it. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. So we'll begin. Um, let's see. There it is. Here I got it. Okay. Um, so we'll begin, I declare uh, the public hearing to consider a proposal to waive school holidays open. Um, and I'd like to read this uh, proposal. Um, notice it's hereby given that the Board of Education of Community High School District number 128, Lake County, Illinois, will hold a hearing tonight um, during the regularly scheduled um, Board of Education meeting at seven o'clock um, for the purposes of taking testimony from educators and parents regarding the proposal to hold school, schedule teachers institutes, conduct parent-teacher conferences, or conduct staff development in-service activities on the second Monday in October, that's Columbus Day, on November 11th, that's Veterans Day, on the third Monday in January, which is the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr., on February 12th, the birthday of President Abraham Lincoln, and the first Monday in March, which is the birthday of Kazmir Pulaski. Uh, the persons honored by these holidays shall be recognized through instructional activities conducted on that day, or if the day is not used for student attendance on the first school day preceding or following that day. In addition, a, mo a moment of silence will also be taken to recognize veterans of foreign wars on Veterans Day. So at this point, I'd like to take um, educator comments on this proposal. <clears throat> this, uh, this proposal allows us to some flexibility in our calendar where uh, we have the opportunity of uh, old classes or um, parents to two days, institute days, as you mentioned. So it allows us um, the flexibility to schedule our entire calendar by giving us flexibility on those days. So uh, in the past, it's been very rare that we use one of those days. But we, we are going to use one day next year, for example. So the proposal, so we support that proposal. Okay, so the proposal is not that we would be in service right. or in, in attendance in these days. It just gives us the flexibility to do so should we so choose. 
for that. Okay. And, the and as part of the con uh, as part of the uh, calendar process, you're approving the calendar every year. And if we have to amend it, you're amending it. So we would be bringing, if we recommended that we waived a holiday, that would be part of our calendar proposal with the rationale. So the board would still, you know, have the option to vote on it. As Denise has pointed out, who's kind of our historian, yeah, we, we used to make the decision on a year-to-year -year basis if we were going right. to hold school any or hold any activities on those. We used to have to do this um, like every five years. We had to renew this, and the legislator had to weigh in on all of these. It was uh, probably not the best use of legislative time. And so now this becomes more of a, Denise, would I be correct in saying permanent? Uh, more of a permanent for the holidays, and then the local entity can weigh those options out as Al has, has played out as normal, our normal calendar process, and we're not subject to having going back and asking every five years if we can do any or all of them. So they're all there. And you know, we have the ability to work with you to take some, all, none of those uh, as part of the calendar process. Okay. And the current thinking is you may take one. Is that correct? Which one? Do we know? Or Which one's for next year? Which one is for next year's best schedule? Is it Kansas for the last year, I believe? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other comments from the educator side? All right. Are there any parent comments or testimonies? All right, seeing none, I declare the hearing closed. All right. All right, um, next, uh, President's report. Uh, I just have uh, one item. Uh, the Lake County Clerk's Office will canvas the votes from the April 9th election on <coughs> April 25th and will transmit the results via email to the district office. Um, we, the school board, must hold a special meeting to accept the canvas of the vote, seat new members, elect officers, and establish a time and place for regular meetings before May 7th. So what that means is we need to schedule a special meeting to get that done in time. Um, so I have a list of possible dates. Those would be Monday the 29th, Tuesday the 30th, Wednesday the 1st, Thursday the 2nd, or Monday the 6th. Although we would vote not waiting until Monday the 6th. Um, personally, I think Denise and I would vote not waiting until the 6th, uh, if we possibly can, uh, just in case there's a ripple in the water someplace. Um, bad yes, a very bad pun, Alex. That You're right, I'm sorry. Very bad pun. Yes, it's been a long few days. Um, I have no issue with any of those. I don't know if everybody else, anybody else. Is there any other activities that have to happen on that? particular day. Well, we have to, we have to, um, the, the board will meet. Uh, when we canvass the vote, then we'll do send day, right, Denise? So the current board will meet, and then basically you'll adjourn your business. So that board will be disbanded. We have to seat the new board, and then um, we have to do oath of office and officers, and election of officers, and our meeting schedule, which, you know, I'm sure that you're probably going to be about the same as we've been. When are you expecting to get the email? Well, the email will come out on the 25th. I'm sorry. Um, the 25th. Yeah, the 25th. So the earliest we could meet is uh, Monday the 29th. First and the 6th are the only dates that work for me. First and the 6th. The only dates that work for me. All right, so let's, what about the 1st? Is there an answer? Okay. Okay. Any other Not for me. Not for you. Or the 6th. Same as the okay. So we'll get Well, actually, the 1st will work. First will work, not the sixth. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. Anybody else? No, sorry. Sure. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay. So we'll shoot. We'll do the first. All right. Perfect. Thank you. May oh, day. I don't think it'll be. It'd be an hour or less. So yeah, it'll be an hour or less. That's our only business that. Yeah. Early. Five thirty. Five thirty. That's fine by me. Okay. Um, actually, later is probably that day, but that's okay. I can do it. I can make any of those. Holy, holy. It's Holy Wednesday. Six. I can do evening or afternoon service. Um, so. How about uh, 530? That's okay. That's okay. Work for all of you? Yeah. yeah. Jim, okay. make that work. All okay. right, great. 530. It's Greek Easter week. So. Oh, yeah. Fair, yeah all that's, right. That's important. Uh, 530, we're not, I'm sure um, we'll keep it real. We're quick. district yeah. office um, here. Um, let's do that. We need a district office. Yeah, district office. 
five thirty. We'll we'll report the results or whatever we come up with um, at the next recording session. Right. Okay. All right. Um, reports from our school board representatives. Okay, so at Vernon Hills, we've been super busy this spring, like usual, um, especially with graduation and prom coming up for the seniors. Um, as far as sports go, well, there haven't been too many going on with this weather. Um, this week, hopefully, is just starting to improve. It was pretty nice out, um, but I know softball has only had like three games maybe outside. Um, so scheduling has been pretty tough, but hopefully it's going to improve. Um, and then in track and field, we've had a few records broken this year already um, from both boys and girls in pole vault and 300 meter hurdles. So congratulations to them. In fine arts, our spring play is in two weeks. It's coming up pretty quickly. It's called Almost Maine, and I encourage you to go see it. It's comedic, and it's supposed to be really, really great. Also, the choir had a spring concert last Thursday, and that was um, featured songs from around the world. So that was really fun. So lots of music things going on. We have, we have our cabaret concert coming up, and also a all new, all acapella concert, which is completely student run, student directed. Um, so that's supposed to be a lot of fun as well. Um, and there's been a ton of student activities going on outside of just sports and music. Um, for example, we had Mr. Cougar last Saturday, and that was amazing. It was very successful. Our auditorium was completely packed, and the 10 guys who competed and performed did a really, really great job. And our winner was Josh Kosglaz. Congratulations to him. And his talent was teacher impersonations, which always <laughs> gets huge laughs from everybody. Um, from the senior side, we have been doing a ton of things to get ready for the end of the year. We are filming our senior video tomorrow, which will debut at our Honors Day Assembly. And we've been planning prom, which is coming up in less than a month. Our theme this year is a night at the Oscars, and we have a red carpet and everything. So everyone's gearing up for that. All the girls are getting their dresses and everything. Um, also, on the academic side, juniors have their PSAE testing tomorrow. So good luck to them. Personally, I will be sleeping. Um, but we know how important these tests are. We all did it last year. So we wish them the best. And also, our WISE team competed in state a few weeks ago. And they ended up <coughs> second um, down at U of I. So much success there. And then overall, I think the seniors are really pretty ready for graduation. We're down to the wire, and um, once we get past the AP tests, which are coming up, um, I think we're all very ready for graduation, and we're very excited for the end of the year. So anyway. Thanks. Okay. So Libertyville is just as busy. Um, spring sports teams are happy to finally be outside on nice days like today for their practice and games. So far, it looks like the team to watch is boys lacrosse. I believe um, all three levels, freshman, JV, and varsity, are currently undefeated, which puts them second in state. Um, the spring play, Much Ado About Nothing, is this weekend and is sure to be a hit. Early May will be full of, full of several final performances of the year, such as a dance recital, choir concert, and a band concert. Um, in student council, due to unexpected flooding, unfortunately, the Mr. LHS pageant that was scheduled for Friday had to be postponed, and we're working hard to pick a new date for the show. Um, voting for the new student council executive board began last Wednesday and will close this Wednesday. On Wednesday, May 1st, student council will be sponsoring our spring blood drive, which with new extended hours, from 7 a.m. all the way to 7 p.m., student staff as well as community members may donate blood and save up to three lives. And prom, our prom theme is suit and tie, which is a 1920s theme that seems to have everyone excited and will be held on May 18th. It's hard to believe that that is only a month away. Um, and same with Vernon Hills. Um, seniors are happy to be able to sleep in tomorrow, but with AP tests right on the corner, it's safe to say AP students will be hitting the books hard the next couple of weeks. Okay, so three weekends ago, the LHS team also went to the WISE competition. We got the wild card to go there. Uh, it's for academic challenge, and we had three individual medalists, and the team itself took fifth overall. So congrats to them. Uh, Relay for Life was two weekends ago. It's a 12-hour overnight lock-in at the Libertyville Sports Complex, sponsored by the American Cancer Society, that only students from LHS, BHHS, Mundelein, and Carmel are eligible to attend. And so this year, over 500 students signed up, and they raised over $70,000. That money goes to the American Cancer Society, which they, they then redirect for everything from research to giving patients rides to and from treatment. Uh, then the same weekend was the Modern United Nations last conference at Northwestern. 
but because it's so close, as in years past it's been used as a conference to get newer members more experience and uh, just ease at the conferences. So everyone that went, they had a great time, they learned a lot. And then this past weekend, day before yesterday, was the Science Olympiad uh, State Competition, also at U of I. Uh, six students pay, uh, placed top four in their individual events, which gave the team a seventh place overall finish. So congrats to them. And I think that concludes this student report. Good, very good. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> okay, superintendent's report, Dr. Lee. Well, as you might have heard, we had a little problem at Libertyville High School starting on uh, Thursday. And uh, it has been very, very uh, intensely busy uh, at LHS and um, attempting to support and work with the building at district office. As the board knows, uh, we've been providing you updates as uh, we received more information. Uh, we have another uh, day of activity today. Um, and Yasmin uh, did a very nice wrap up at the end of the day. So we would ask um, she and Jess uh, to give us an update. Um, but I will punctuate and, and announce uh, on uh, behalf of the students there that they will be able to park at Libertyville High School uh, tomorrow and I'm sure that made Marina a hero today when she made that announcement. A little dancing maybe, not cheering, but uh, yes. Yeah. So anyway, Yaz, do you want to take us forward from the point that we're at now? from Click uh, came to the school district. Um, Mike and Chris and I know Chris very well as I work with him very closely. Um, and both were here to assess what was going on. And in the process, um, they indicated that initial conversations with us did not lead them to believe that we had as large a problem as it uh, turned out to be uh, once they were here. So they deployed all their resources and we started out uh, as soon as we found out that there was oil in the sub-basement in contacting an environmental group to assist in cleaning the basement. Uh, services of Environmental Group Services Limited uh, were retained and these costs are going to be paid by our insurance company. And what they did was uh, they installed negative air machines in the sub-basement so the air inside could be forced outside, um, thus dealing with the odors that were in the basement. They also determined uh, that since the area was confined around the elevator pit and uh, the elevator control room, those were the areas that needed to be addressed right away. Um, because the areas were uh, had oil in them, um, they retained the services of Celtic Environment and they have been working on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They were there today too. And when I stopped by to see them earlier this morning, they indicated they were hoping to finish by the end of the day. If not, they would be here tomorrow just to kind of finish up what was going on. Once that cleanup is done, then the services of Belfour USA is, have been uh, uh, retained too. And they are the ones who are going to move, relocate, or dispose of all the items that were in uh, the basement. What they are going to do is they're going to look at items such as the desk, the chairs, uh, things like that to see whether they can be cleaned and salvaged. If not, they will take care of disposing of those items. As they dispose of the items, um, they are providing the manpower as well as the dumpster for this. Um, as they dispose of the items, they're going to make a list of what is being disposed. Once we have been provided with that list, we can move forward with replacing those items and uh, um, uh, be reimbursed for it. Uh, the only thing we would not be reimbursed for um, is our deductible, which is $2,500. Um, um, they've indicated that this will be a pretty time-consuming uh, uh, project that they will be taking on because everything in the basement will have to be looked at. It would have to be moved manu manually and uh, be dumped. So we're asking patience from everyone involved as they try to replace some of the items because we do not know what items will be cleaned that we can probably, you know, reuse again. Um, we will also... Um, We've already addressed some of the items that were damaged, for instance, uh, all the copy paper, copier paper, uh, which is also used in our printers, was down there. 
So we have started uh, buying that paper because that was totally, totally destroyed. Uh, there was a lot of supplies in there, especially uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, bathroom uh, supplies and stuff like that, Kleenex, uh, uh, paper towels. All those were damaged too, so we're in the process of replacing those two. However, that brings up another problem for us that as far as storage space is concerned, we cannot use the sub-basement anymore while work is being done in it. Um, so um, the insurance company has recommended that either we find out off-site storage or uh, we uh, rent pods and put them in our uh, building so that we can store stuff. In the meantime, items that are paper goods or paper itself, we're going to store for a limited time in the old admin building uh, as those are needed on a pretty consistent basis and it doesn't make sense to have our people go off-site each time uh, paper is needed. Um, in addition to that, um, once the area is all cleaned up is when we will have the people uh, inspect to see what caused the problem. Uh, right now, all we see is a crack in the sub-basement floor, and it's kind of hard to look around it or to do anything there because all the stuff is kind of just kind of moved to one corner. So once all the items are removed from there, that's when we will know what exactly happened and what is the cause behind it and what is the solution behind it. Um, at this point, we've also worked very closely with uh, Public Works to see um, uh, where the sewer lines are, where they terminate, where they end up. Uh, there are some that were capped when we started adding on to the facility, so we want to make sure that those are not <coughs> compromised in any way. And we are very fortunate that nobody was hurt as the water came up very suddenly and everything around in there started to sort of crunch down. Um, actually, there was an employee there who was very close to have uh, you know, hurt himself if he had not managed to get out in time. So we are very concerned about that situation too. Um, in addition to that, we had uh, some switches and um, a whole set of um, computer equipment there, which unfortunately was uh, damaged. Um, there were some termination racks in there, and these racks distributed network communication to a number of our rooms where not only do we have classes, but we also have offices. And right now, those rooms do not have uh, uh, phone service. Uh, and to some extent, they do not have uh, um, wireless connection or hardwire connection. All that was damaged. Now, in order to replace those, we've already, irrespective of what the outcome is, because we need to provide services to these rooms, we have already uh, ordered the network switches that were needed and the wireless access points. But what we are doing is, and this will be a cost at our expense, is that whereas this was initially in the sub-basement, we are going to move it up a level to the main basement floor. So that in case we have a situation similar to this one, we are not dealing with uh, uh, having half of our building or a portion of our building cut off. Um, at this point, the estimated uh, cost because the wiring was about 18 or 19 years old, it was all CAT uh, 5, and uh, Jim helped me out here. What we are moving to is CAT 6, and the insurance company has basically told us that, look, we only replace similar. We are not going to pay for you to upgrade what you have in the building. So we will have to pay the cost of that, and we just got an estimate uh, that just the cost of the wiring will be $53,000. I do not at this point know how much insurance is going to pay for it, but I think it is critical that we upgrade what needs to be done and move the location from the sub-basement uh, uh, to the basement. And Jim, I don't know if you want to add anything to that conversation. Yeah, my, my understanding is it, it, it's old Cat 5. It's right. been yes. uh, Category 5 is a, a type of cable that is no longer really standard uh, and used, so it can't handle the higher speeds that uh, you know, most of our networks work on it uh, at this point in time. So <clears throat> that's run throughout that section of the building. And since it was damaged, it needs to be replaced, and it makes no sense whatsoever to replace it with, you know, basically out-of-date technology. Uh, so the CAT6 cabling, and it's not cheap. Unfortunately, that's typically in a project like this, the most expensive is the cable and the, the labor to install the cable. So the insurance company the labor to install 
They will probably cover the labor to install. Obviously, the fact that we're moving it from the sub-basement to a basement may mean additional cost because we are running wiring differently now. Yeah. But at least they'll cover most of the labor cost associated with it. This is so new that right now we haven't even had time to sit down and talk with the insurance uh, company. Um, and, they, and they may do the wiring up to the five level. Right? May, maybe. Have to pick up the gap, like right. you know, yeah. often yeah. happens with your homeowner's insurance right. if you want to upgrade after a casualty event. So we'll see. But a side point to that is that for the past eight years, I have sat on the executive board of Click, and I have seen a number of claims uh, going through, substantial claims, and I've seen how fast the response and the amount of funds that are given to school districts to correct the issues that are there. So I'm relatively confident that we will be able to recoup most of the funds that we have to put out right now, uh, and uh, we'll keep you informed as to, uh, you know, how much is being spent. Um, maybe this might be the first time that uh, we may have to come to you and ask you to release some of the contingency funds so we can at least address the needs in the building and then uh, get it reimbursed. So. And yes, one, one of the other things, <clears throat> there are a couple of other issues in structurally. If you kind of think kind of strategically about this, you've kind of got the, the hygiene things that, that Yaz is talking about, you know, the floor strippers and things to keep the building clean and supplies on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you have some of the classroom kinds of things like Yaz is talking that will impact, so that's one of them. One of the other things is there's a compressor downstairs that runs some of the things in our applied technology. So for example, in the wood shop where we have the industrial sawdust removal, uh, that's run by um, that master compressor, the lifts in the auto shop. Um, and some other areas of the building. So that's been damaged, likely beyond you know repair. It seems like at least, yes, right. I think it is, is what the, you guys. And we are getting a uh, smaller one right now to really get the kind of keep us going. program going. So, we can, keep, so we can keep classroom stuff going the best we can on a temporary basis as we, uh, as we look towards um, long term. And then uh, I think the, the other issue that's related to moving equipment up and down, if we had equipment that was usable down there is the elevator, which I'm sure is Jess is and Yaz and, and uh, are going to talk about. So you've got those pieces that are impacting this kind of the hygiene, you know, supplies, and then you've got the classroom stuff, and then you've got the structural um, stuff, which you guys are going to spend a little time on, um, I think, this evening as well. So Jess or Yaz will let you guys take it away, and Alex can jump in where he wants to. This happened about approximately 6 to 10 in the morning, Thursday morning, where there was a loud noise in the sub-basement, which the floor buckled up. There's a crack one to two inches in, in width and about 45 feet in length going north and south. At this point, we're not sure, well, we're not sure. We're 90% sure that it's a, uh, it's not storm water, but it's a septic because of the, the sewer, the smell, and, and so forth. Our brand new, three years ago, freight elevator is shot. Uh, the controls are, are pretty well underwater, and that's going to take some time to get that repaired, and it's kind of set. It's up on the top. We can't bring it down. We can't do anything with it to move stuff around. Uh, so that's an issue. Uh, the uh, Soil, we're getting a, the, the uh, soil boring, soil, you right. want to explain? Yeah. Um, we discussed um, one of the items that we were concerned about was um, the soil around um, the school district. Um, we looked at a number of drawings. Unfortunately, it isn't very easy to find asphalts. Um, there have been a number of additions to the school. There are a number of drawings all over, and it took us a while to locate some of the drawings that we were looking for. But one of the items suggested to us was also that we should do some soil borings again. We did some when we built in 76. We did some in 1997. We did some in 2002. Um, and oh, what we have asked STR to do for us is to retain the services of um, a company in Libertyville that is going to do soil borings around the school. Um, and at this time, we have about 25 soil borings that they will do. Uh, this will be at a cost to the school district. And, uh, you know, we 
feel it is important enough for us to do it so we know what kind of issues we are dealing with. If uh, And I um, discussed a little bit with Alex today and he had some great suggestions which I passed on to uh, Mike at STR uh, to include in the work that is going to go on. And we hope to have that work started um, hopefully uh, tomorrow and the day after and get those soil borings done and uh, then have some additional information one of the things that Alex suggested, and Alex, I don't know if you want to add on to what you recommended we do uh, as we do the soil borings. Uh, the, well, the biggest thing is uh, we, we have what, to call, what are called two spring water pumps, and uh, they've been in the boiler room forever, about five feet in a little, I'll call it ante room on the north side of the boiler room. I, I noticed that Thursday they were running flat out, and the water was right at the top, and I, I, I thought, okay, that could be attributable to the storm and to, to a lot of water uh, elevation and, and hydrost hydrostatic pressure. But uh, Yasmin tells me tonight that those always run like that. And uh, so there's some, there, 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 there could be a spring, but more likely it, there's some conduit to, the, to that point from the lake. And uh, the, uh, it's important that we, we shouldn't have that happen again. If, they, if the water level is right there and the sub-basement is I think about four or five feet below that, then it's been living with some kind of pressure on that slab. And as, as the water level became extreme, uh, it, well, that's what, what finally brought the slab up. And it, well, anyway, in my opinion at this point, but certainly a 45 foot crack, two inches wide, <coughs> says it all. Uh, so, so I think the, the important thing is to, uh, to, to understand from these soil borings, not only what What's it, what it's made of, you know, to, to debunk the myth that it's all sand and, and that, that the school is sinking. That's certainly not true, I'm sure. I'm sure they went down to the proper, proper footings, uh, to build proper footings. But the, the important thing, too, is to take a soil bear, uh, sample and then, while you have a hole, let's find out how much water is coming out of that hole. Or at what depth, first of all, what depth is that? And, and, and how much of a source would it be if you wanted to suddenly start pumping that water out of that hole? By finding that out, we can find out just how <clears throat> how much of a conduit the soil is from the lake over to the school. And once we know that, including the sub-basement, I think we're going to add two samples at least to, to core in the sub-basement to see just what that water table looks like. And in, in my opinion, uh, by the time we're done here, we should have a couple of pretty decent sump pumps in the sub-basement to try to draw that down. Now, we don't want them to become spring water pumps and run flat out all the time either, but uh, we, we, that's why the surrounding core samples are important to understand just how porous, I'll call it, the, the, uh, the soil is, and then from there, see what it takes to drive that water table down on the building to where we're below slab and we won't have the possibility of this uh, happening again, or minimal anyway. At 6.30 in the morning, <coughs> the water rising at a, a, at a rapid rate until about one o'clock. It was up almost to the transformer, which would have given us another set of problems. But from that point on, the water just dissipated. What, what's the missing equation to that? It's hard, it's hard to know what, where the, the, the core samples, the soil samples would tell us a lot. <clears throat> Because it's hard to say. Uh, people have said something broke, a sewer maybe collapsed, and, but but that just didn't feel right. And, and that's not going to drive a, a whole slab in there. That's 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 the groundwater coming into effect. And I don't think a broken sewer is going to contribute to that. Another issue we had is obviously the parking lot, the north west corner of our parking lot that's not too old either that we redid. Uh, in checking that out, it looks like there are some cracks, but we're not sure at this time if that's caused by the, the flood or just normal wear and tear. That's also going to be looked at, isn't that? That is correct. Tomorrow, uh, when Click is back here again, they will look at the parking lot also to determine um, what is the cause of that erosion in that particular area. So there's some more Is there a sanitary line running under that crack in the sub There is. But it's not going in that direction, which the crack is. That's the, another mystery. It's going, this is a north-south, isn't it going east and west? Yeah. yeah, so we don't know why it would have cracked that way. If you think it's, if you think it's simply, is it, that, that means that it saves your line, it's cracked and broken or something. 
four is an abandoned one and was capped, and the cap, something happened to the cap or something. But I, I think Alex is right. There's an awful lot of pressure that made that floor buckle like that to come up and to do the damage it did to our cages and so forth. That that's, I mean, I don't think it's all to you. All, uh, no, I don't. I, and I, I'm even wondering if it's sanitary because uh, the last time I checked low tide or the bottom of the lake, it smells pretty bad anyway. And I, I'm just wondering if we've actually uh, done any samples to look for you know, the typical coliforms or whatever we might find in actual sewage. Uh, because I'm just wondering if the if the odor is just the odor and uh, it's perhaps not not as uh, you know I'm, I'm sure there's some sanitary because we had a couple of toilets uh, get caught in all this oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that, that well, we need to figure that out yeah. the floor the floor. Yeah. this will happen again if we don't come up with a solution if something had, something had to have happened to to keep the water out of just some basement then something happened where it probably rose up to to the water table, that's the same. If, you know, Butler Lake is the water table that you would find underground. So that's what, that's why it rose and stopped. It probably stopped at the water table level. So, but I don't I don't know what was keeping the water out of the sun basement. No, I didn't. When it, 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 when it did really stop, when it did go, <laughs> then it went up to the. And that's what water happens water. with soil or or foundation walls if they're continuous. They might. They might be doing something to really slow the water down and allow for a gradient of a difference in elevations. Because the lake normal level is 691 uh, above sea level, I think that's the reference, and, and uh, the sub-basement is uh, 687. 686 or something like yeah. that, yeah. And uh, so, so that's, that's a difference when the lake's not elevated of four feet. And so somewhere in there, somehow, something was either slowing it down or the, 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 the slab was sealed to where it didn't yeah, I think weeping. something because it's it's all glacial till it's it's probably not it's probably something artificial that was around the sub basement. The glacial till variation isn't that. Okay. And the drains, the roof drains, and so forth. There was, I mean, all of that played part of this. I mean, all of the water that was coming off. Of it, I mean, and, and everything did at once. Is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, and, and if you think about it, you know, if you think about an 18 or 20 foot or more uh, roof drain of if they suddenly stop flowing and they contribute to the pressure in there, that's that's literally 20 feet of head, which is a pressure that you'd never see uh, yeah. in, in, a, in a storm system, typically. So there's there's a lot, and I I'm not I'm not sure that this slab is just going to get patched and we'll, yeah. we'll move on. This this may be a tear up there by the time we're done. Uh, and I, I heard somebody else say that before, but that's I just have a, a feeling that no pun intended. We need to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> On the northeast, that softball fields where they have yeah. those, it looked, I was running by there today, it looked like the water had been up in that area. Did yes. they lose a lot of stuff in there too? No one has said anything to me about that here. Maybe they didn't even look. No, <laughs> they were pretty good about it. Why shouldn't say that? Well, we get the spring water pumps to, in the boiler room to stop work, you know, to stop running continuously, then I, then I feel like we and I did talk to Mike Henderson at SDR to say that that is an issue we need to address yeah. as soon as we're done with the sub basement project. Maybe at the same time. I think it might just one will cure the other. Be one or the other, right? But the studio theater, the swimming pool, and all of that are brought on the same swim. level. I mean, I, I and no no problem there. I mean, so it's just it just this is a mystery. Probably it's uh, well, it's a, I think it's a function of how the foundation was built and. We'll see what those So we'll need to do more investigation. Yes, uh, sir. One of the points we want to make again for the public, because there was so much information, uh, particularly on the, the uh, visual TV uh, television media, is that uh, our structural engineer has determined that the building is safe for occupancy. If it was not, our students would not uh, be in that area of the building. Uh, today, so uh, you know, we, we had that settled, um, and that's important for parents to know. It's also important for your um, for our students to know, um, you know, as well. The other thing is, uh, much like uh, these kind of events, um, 
when you have them. It really brought out the, the best in District 128, the best at Libertyville High School. Uh, there are just so many people to thank that we'll have to do that formally at some point, but certainly, you know, all of our buildings and grounds team at, at Libertyville High School, um, you know, Jess and Yaz, Marina, uh, Eric Marosher, Ray Alvin, uh, Brian Kelly, the leadership team over there, um, a number of our ESP staff who, you know, hung around and helped, Sandra Kruckman, some of the other people um, that stayed around and helped uh, the sport, I think that, you know, they had throughout the... All the kids out of the building so quickly. Right, exactly. And uh, today we want to compliment um, our students and our parents. I was over there this morning after I dropped my daughter off very early because I thought it would be very busy over there and it really wasn't. Uh, and stayed with Maureen and her team kind of at the front entrance and it was, you know, I thought, I don't know what you guys thought, but it us appeared to be smoother than a normal day uh, with not everyone driving. Yeah, every it was, um, so that required a lot of teamwork and a lot of patience on, on students parts and parents parts and so um, all, all of you did your part and we're very appreciative of that. It's nice that we're going to be able to be in the lot. Uh, we might have to cordon, you know, some parts of the lot off for pods or uh, equipment temporarily as they're going through everything, uh, determining what we're going to keep. But, you know, we will be able to use the back lot, which will allow the students to, um, you know, drive again. And I'm sure by today you were ready to come back to school. Even the seniors who are ready to get out of school, Probably like, I miss my friends, I'm ready to get back to my activities, I want to go play softball, uh, all of those kinds of things. So it was really nice, and it was, um, I think, fortuitous that we had a nice, sunny, and turned out to be a very warm day today. So that's all good. And it finally stopped raining <laughs> last week. That certainly helped um, our issue. So, so, yeah, not for long, yeah, I guess. Um, so, I, it, yes, Jess, uh, Alex. Um, Al, Marina, anybody have anything else? And Mary, thanks for your work with uh, our media friends. We have a Tribune reporter here tonight. Everyone say hi to the Tribune reporter. Okay, hi, Tribune Daniel. reporter. Um, so uh, Mary did a great job working with the media and uh, working with our social media to get information out. And of course, Marina and Mary uh, working together to get Alert Now messages out to make sure that uh, our parents and students knew uh, what were going on and also to debunk uh, a lot of the rumors that were being fanned by the, the media, frankly, that were wholly inaccurate. So uh, that was very helpful. I just asked, what, so was anything in the art room actually even touched or damaged? No. Yeah. No. 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 No artwork was lost forever. No. no. They said we but touched it. This, was this all <laughs> under? Yes, it was all in the sub basement. Yes. The, yeah. the, was the art room kind of up above yeah. the basement? Yeah. It was all in the sub basement. But they were afraid that the floor sure. went up and... But they didn't lose their... They, they did not. Okay. Okay. Just, you know, you hear. Right, so it was just I a... I actually heard that um, LHS was not going to reopen and all the LHS students were going to be going to Vernon Hills. Yeah. <laughs> like, money room here. Well, really? Got room for them, right, Ellen? <laughs> I heard that uh, at the center. It would be second shift, though. Pretty right. sure that's not going to happen. We saw a picture that the kids photoshopped oh. where the... Well, there were some there were some pretty cool events. There were uh, some students surfboarding out on uh, on Butler Lake, and some students decided to go for a swim and send us some pictures. Although the water was probably pretty cold, and as Alex has pointed out, pretty mucky. Uh, <laughs> All in all, but uh, I think the students made the best of, uh, of the day, um, certainly that first day. So uh, we will continue to stay on this. We will update the board, obviously, in the community as we get uh, more information. And we're also very appreciative that Alex was available with his engineering background uh, to come over and uh, kind of talk the engineering language with Mike uh, Henderson from STR and uh, uh, structural people that come in and, and that he's going to continue to um, kind of, I'm sure, I hope, work with us as uh, we work through uh, the process. This is uh, this is a problem that only an engineer could appreciate, and maybe a geologist, Al. Okay. Is is there anything else we can do from a board perspective, or that we need to do from a funding, emergency funding, anything that, in order to so you guys can keep moving forward? I think at this point we are okay, but maybe um, in, at the main meeting. Depending I didn't list uh, 
I just want to make sure that you know, you're not waiting on us for anything for, for I mean, approvals for anything. We have funds, but it may not be in the right object category. Therefore, we have to. Yes, one, one, I guess, question for the board as well as us that you and Jess would probably know the answer to, and that would be, in an emergency situation like this, if we had to do something tomorrow yeah. that was over $25,000, does it allow for emergency expenditures without board approval if we had to do something like tomorrow to, to fix something Basically, really Basically, what we would do is we would call the board members on the phone and say we have this issue and just get their support that way, and at the next regular board meeting we take action on okay so. all right so yeah, there is some ability okay Legal. all right anything else any other questions okay how about the students any questions from you guys I mean you're you're our Libertyville students you're in the building does that all make sense to you yeah I mean I heard all sorts of rumors so it's good to hear the truth so I'll be spreading the truth around <laughs> well I can tell you when I was right after having spent an hour and a half on the phone with Jess and the crew um, when I came toward the high school, I, Mary called and Mary Todd called and said, hey, are you at the office yet? I said, no, I'm not there yet. She said, when you get it there, turn on, I won't name the TV station, but turn on one of the TV stations because they are reporting that Libertyville High School is on fire and the building has collapsed. <laughs> so that's where we started and that's what your parents heard on the radio after they dropped you off to school. Um, and that's kind of where it started. So it was a, a morning of really trying to get accurate information out and other media outlets reported that the building had collapsed was sinking into the sinkhole and you know I mean it was just we really heard from A to Z but again to compliment you as students and your parents uh, you followed us on social media you listened to the announcements that we put out and you paid attention um, and I think once we got through those first media calls which Marina and her team did a great job of fielding which raised some concern with people no that's not accurate you know, we really had, you know, very few phone calls based on the information that we had. So it was just chasing down the erroneous information that happens in a, in a news story. That's just kind of the way it goes um, moving forward. So, um, yeah, I'm glad you guys are feeling better about things and you've got some accurate information and you're helping us run that down. So, okay, great. Um, well, that was uh, quite a report. Um, so you know a little bit of what we've been doing. Uh, of course, in the midst of all that, we just have some outstanding news, uh, as we always do. Um, the following LHS students were named March Students of the Month. Zach Neer, Macy Neubauer, Madeline Anderson, Alex Zellick, uh, Matt McGrath, Megan Gayhart, Chandler Scott, and Isabel Espinosa. Uh, as you've heard, the VHHS WISE team won second place in its division at the state tournament held at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. In addition to the team trophy, team members received individual awards in the following areas. In biology, fourth place, Justin Yim. In sixth place, Michaela Kovaranen. In computer science, fifth place, Eric Zhang. In English, fifth place, Justin Song. In math, first place, Justin Yim. And in physics, third place, Matt Tabrizi. And in sixth place, John Hoffman. The team is coached by head coach Josh Ravenscraft and assistant coach Shannon Etnier. The LHS Wise team finished fifth in its division and in the state competition. Individual medalists at state were Jack Bomruck, third in physics, Tim Lee, fifth in chemistry and fifth in math, and uh, someone I think we know, Nishad Fouke, uh, fourth in math and sixth in biology. And nine students contributed points to the team score, allowing the team to take home the fifth place trophy. Other members of the team were Rachel Broughton, Daniel Hartung, um, Marcelle Joseph, um, Eric Klein, Heather Legan, Kevin Liu, Stefan Markovic, Richard Pan, Sarah Rubin, and Chase Wonderlich. Uh, the LHS team is sponsored by Pete Dawson and Dave Kreutz. The following VHHS music students were selected to perform at the University of Illinois Chamber Music Symposium on April 6th and 7th. They were Scott Bass, Kristen Chapman, Susie Chen, Jennifer Cheng, Helen Deng, Mark Edler, Katie Franz, Anne Ho, Paige Kibler, Patrick Kozan, Jared Kozel, Sherry Siri Lee, uh, Heisu Lee, Neil McLean, Wu Jin O, oh, Sean Reiki, Michael Reiki, Emily Spence, uh, Sam Ver Verin, 
Jake Visick, Alice Zhang, and Steven Zhang. The students participated in master classes with graduate students and University of Illinois professors and gave a recital the following day. LHS juniors Tara uh, Ear and Julia Curry have been chosen to attend the 2013 Illinois Girls' Day June, 20, June 16th to the 22nd at Eastern Illinois University. Sponsored by the American Legion Auxiliary, uh, Illini Girls' State is a week-long program dedicated to providing training for young women on city, county, and state government. 9D128, um, let me start again, 9D128 students were chosen to have their work displayed in the student perspectives juried photography exhibition at the Perspective Fine Art Photography Gallery in Evanston. Photography by LHS students Susanna Kalunga, uh, Alice Zhu, Alexis Lindell, and Laura Andrew, and VHHS students Kylie Niemeyer, Alyssa Burroughs, Marisol Jamis, Amy Swartz, and Natalie Martinez will be on display, display in the gallery May 2nd through the 26th. A show opening and awards program will be held May 4th. More than 180 works were submitted for the exhibition by over 60 student artists. Alice Yu's um, photo was selected to appear on the publicity posters announcing the show. 13 D182, D18 students, um, artists, received honors in the 14th annual 4x5 show held at Fremd High School in Palatine. Over 35 schools participate in the show with 1,300 pieces of artwork only four inches by five inches in size. The show will be on display at Fremd from March 23rd through May 1st. The following D1 to 8 students received honors in the show. LHS printmaking first place, Ellen Kenston. Printmaking honorable mention, mention uh, Aliyah Omni. Drawing first place, Isabella uh, Lesna. Painting honorable mention, Lucy Christensen. Mixed Media, Honorable Mention, Grace Millar. Digital Photography, Honorable Mention, Alice Zhu. At VHHS, Drawing Honorable Mention, Ann Ho. Drawing Honorable Mention, Jenny Park. And Drawing Honorable Mention, Cassandra Sandoval. In Painting, Honorable Mention, Tiffany Doe. Mixed Media, Honorable Mention, Olivia Weaver. Printmaking, Honorable Mention, Ann Ho. Computer Generated, Honorable Mention, Hannah Friedman, and Darkroom Photography, Honorable Mention, Luke Turner. The National Interscholastic Swimming Coaches Association of America has recognized the LHS Varsity Boys Swim Team as a recipient of the NICSA Scholar Team Award. The Scholar Team Award recognizes teams achieving high academic standards and is based on the average cumulative GPA of an entire varsity team of 12 or more athletes. The goal of the Scholar Team Award is to recognize academic success in the classroom for entire swimming, diving, and water polo teams, as well as athletic success in the pool. With a team GPA of 3.41, the LHS team received recognition at the bronze level. The team is coached by Bob Groseth. District 128 Director of Communication, Mary Todrick, has been elected 2013-14 president of the Illinois chapter of National School Public Relations Association. Let's stop and give Mary a round of applause. Mary, congratulations. <laughs> That's quite an honor. That's uh, a great group in Illinois, and so Mary, we're very proud of you. VHHS head girls basketball coach Paul Bretner was named the Illinois Basketball Coaches Association Co-Coach of the Year, so congratulations to Paul. The newly released book, The Power of the Social Brain, Teaching, Learning, and Interdependent Thinking includes a chapter authored by VHHS Choir Director Jeremy Little. Mr. Little's chapter is titled The Seven Habits of Highly Interdependent Teachers. The book gives readers new strategies for more successful, affirming, and productive group work in classrooms and professional learning communities. The District 128 Special Olympians had great success at yesterday's bocce tournament in Barrington. Nine athletes under the direction of head coach Andy Compton and assistant coach Corey Atwell qualified for the state summer games in Bloomington. The 16 D128 athletes brought home a total of 11 gold medals, seven silver, 10 bronze, 
and two fourth place ribbons. Congratulations to our Special Olympians who brought home the following honors. Michael Ivers, bronze. Eric Catterlin, bronze. Corey Truger, two golds. Eduardo Aguilar, two golds. Laura Steen, gold and a silver. John Survey, two silvers. Trevor Furman, a gold and a bronze. Ellie Goldberg, two bronze. Marie Kaplis, a bronze and a fourth place. Mallory Marvin, two bronze. David Leonard, Leonard, gold and silver. Adrian Soto, silver and bronze. Nick Zakari, gold and a fourth place. Vinny Lacochi, gold and silver. Michelle Shepley, gold and a bronze. And Austin Josenhaus, Josenhans, a gold and a silver. So congratulations again. Uh, and having played our Special Olympi Olympians in bocce ball with Dave Clough once, uh, you don't want to go there. Uh, they are very, very good. So uh, that uh, concludes the good news tonight. Uh, we have a donation this month, as you will note in your package. Uh, we want to thank Mrs. Anna Dra, who donated a Yamaha clarinet, model 450N, to the Libertyville High School Music Department. And uh, as always, we're very appreciative of those um, donations. The board will note that we had two FOIA requests this month in the packet. And at this point, uh, we will come back to where we started this evening uh, with uh, requesting a motion uh, for a holiday waiver um, proposal. And I think uh, you have a copy of the motion in your uh, packet. If someone would like to read that, I certainly have the motion here if um, someone wants to make the motion. Okay, I move that the proposal to waive the following legal holidays as required under Public Act 96640 be approved. The birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the birthday of President Abraham Lincoln, the birthday of Casimir Pulaski, Columbus Day, and Veterans Day. In order to hold school, schedule teachers' institutes, conduct parent-teacher conferences, or conduct staff development in-service activities on an as-needed basis. Second. Any discussion? Aye. Absent. Aye. Kelly Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, next on the agenda tonight is um, I have the great pleasure to uh, recommend the appointment of the new assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. I'm pleased to make a recommendation to the board this evening for the position of assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction. Following an extensive candidate screening process, four candidates were selected to interview with stakeholder interview teams on Thursday, April 18th. The interview teams included district and building administrators, teachers, and support staff. Following the stakeholder interviews, two candidates were selected for final interviews with me on Friday, April 19th. As a result, I am very excited to recommend Dr. Rita Fisher as the new District 128 Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Rita is currently the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction at Grays Lake Community High School, District 127. She has more than 20 years of educational experience having worked as Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, Associate Principal of Curriculum and Instruction, Social Studies Department Chair, and Social Studies Teacher in District 127 since 1992. In addition, she has extensive experience as a conference presenter and professional development provider. Rita holds a BA in Interdisciplinary Social Sciences from Barat College, an MA in Curriculum and Instruction from Barat College, an MS in Educational Administration from Northern Illinois University, and an EdD in Educational Leadership from National Lewis University. Rita is highly regarded for her instructional leadership work and positive working relationships with teachers, administrators, and staff to ensure student growth and increase student achievement. She is an outstanding instructional leader and will be a great addition to the District 128 leadership team. And as two quick asides, um, I've been doing administrative hiring for 22 years now. And um, I think all of us would agree uh, this particular pool of candidates that we had for this uh, position, starting with the 40 applicants, uh, was by far the strongest. And our two finalists um, for the position um, were two um, stellar um, candidates for the position, either uh, one of them who would have done a fabulous job for us. So it was a very, very uh, difficult decision process, and both candidates were amazing. 
um, and we'll continue to do work, uh, good work, uh, where they move forward. Um, the second thing is I want to compliment our stakeholder interview teams. Um, again, that mix of administrators, teachers, and support staff. Uh, we have many phases in this process, so I get many data points uh, and much uh, feedback back from uh, a lot of different um, uh, steps in the process. And as always, our two interview teams uh, just did really professional work in terms of assessing the candidate and providing me very usable feedback for a final interview with them on Friday and the final decision making uh, process. So with that said, we are getting a great uh, assistant superintendent for uh, curriculum and instruction. We are all very excited uh, on the leadership team and I know uh, our staff will be too. So with that said, I recommend the employment of Dr. Rita Fisher as the new District 128 Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Yes, we'll need a motion from someone. Okay, I make a motion that we employ Dr. Rita Fisher for the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction position, District 128. Thank you. Any discussion? No. Roll call, please. Batson? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Grudy. <laughs> Great. That's good that we can let Rita know it was a 7 0 vote, not a 6 0 vote tonight, Stephen. That's really good. Yes, the same, apparently. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, okay, one more thing under other uh, for me this evening, and we can move on with the rest of the agenda. Uh, I want to thank the board again for uh, their support of. Um, the superintendents in Lake County for our work with our legislators on uh, legislation that uh, would have a, a positive or a negative impact uh, on um, public schools in Lake County and in the state of Illinois. Uh, recently, uh, we joined together to work um, with our legislators to oppose uh, the PTEL um, proposed legislation, extension limitation, which was House Bill 89 sponsored by Representative Franks in, uh, up in Woodstock and McHenry County. Uh, that bill, in effect, would uh, cut off the ability of local taxing bodies to um, have any uh, additional revenue flow in uh, at least the next few years um, at a time when it's likely that pension costs will be passed back to local school districts that we will be, we will be paying more uh, toward our employ, uh, employees' uh, pensions. And uh, other le legislation is passing. Uh, that would require more expenditures from local school districts. Um, state aid, as, as you know, is uh, likely to be reduced to 80% of the funding level that uh, it was three years ago. And so that is a perfect storm uh, for public schools. So um, I wanted to let the board know that uh, that bill was defeated on the floor of the House through the efforts of many people, including um, our own board and um, the Lake County superintendents with data that we provided. And uh, we're very appreciative of your continued support. And uh, we will continue to develop relationships with our local legislators um, so we can um, support and oppose when necessary legislation that would be detrimental, uh, not only District 128, but other public schools in Lake County. So that's the status of that bill. And Pat, with that, that concludes the superintendent's report. OK, thanks very much. Anybody from the public uh, wishing to speak? Next, the consent vote agenda. Can I ask for a motion to approve the consent vote agenda? This was all reviewed in committee earlier this month. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Kelly Pollock? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Um, Program and Personnel Committee, uh, Chairperson Maurer. Sure. Okay, we have. First, uh, the first reading of board policies. The first one is policy 615, school accountability, and that has just been rewritten to reflect um, the option of school choice and some other items based on us not making AYP this year, and we need to do that to be in compliance with our acceptance of Title I funds. Um, also, policy 6190, extracurricular and co-curricular activities. This requires students to, pay, to minimally pass 25 hours of instruction per week to remain eligible for extracurricular activities. We already do this, but now it's just, we're just bringing our policy in line with our practice. Um, so I need a motion to accept those policies as for, for first reading. I move to accept uh, policy 615 and 190 for the uh, first reading. Aye. 
Lundstedt? Aye. Aye. Baxter? Aye. 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 Okay, next we have the 2013-14 amended school calendar. We're already we're amending it. Um, this is it being amended to reflect some confirmed testing dates in April and October of next year. So we need a motion to approve that. Second. Rudy? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Bauer? Aye. Bradford? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Baxter? Aye. Sally Bauer? Aye. Okay, then we have educational tour requests. We have two tour, requ tour requests for outdoor adventure challenges. We need a motion to approve those field trips. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Lundstedt? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Bradford? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Baxter? Aye. Aye. And, and then finally, we have we need a motion to approve the employment of employees um, for educational support staff replacement hires as listed below on your agenda. So moved. Second. This concludes the report. Thank you very much. Chairperson Arthur, facility compliance. Uh, we have four bid recommendations for this evening. Uh, first up is the VHA, VHHS tennis court resurfacing. So we need a motion to accept uh, the base bid from First Impression Inc. of Franklin Park, Illinois, in the amount of $116,400 for the VHHS Tennis Court Resurfacing Project. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Lundstedt? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Baxter? Aye. Deli Aye. Rudy? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Mauer? Aye. Motion carries. Second up is the VHHS Irrigation System. So we need a motion to accept the bid from Cloudburst Services of Burlington, Illinois, in the amount of $51,985 for the VHHS irrigation system expansion. Should we defer this for a month or two? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't it been already irrigated uh, yeah, pretty we, well? We got our money <laughs> for this month. <laughs> I, I will we accept that bid. Second. Roll call, please. Arthur? Aye. Batson? Aye. Kelly Collins? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. 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 Number three is the administrative office renovations. So we need a motion to accept the general work base bid from ATP Enterprise Group of Northfield, Illinois, in the amount of $529,000. Uh, for the administrative office renovations. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Hanson? Aye. Kelly Foley? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Mauer? Aye. Ransom? Aye. Arthur? Aye. And last up is LHS and VHHS t telephone hardware upgrades. Uh, so we're looking for a motion to accept the bid from Sound Incorporated of Naperville, Illinois in the amount of $142,208.29 for the telephone upgrades for both high schools. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call. This, actually, this was one that was not discussed at committee, so if we could have a quick Update on it, please. Our phone system is uh, relatively old now, and it's to the point where we needed to upgrade it. So, for the past six months or so, the IT department has been looking at a number of phone systems to see which is best, especially for the school district, and they narrowed it down to the short hill uh, system. Um, earlier this year, we installed some of the phones. In it's time to move into the two high schools. This will allow us to put a phone in every classroom and uh, give us the ability also to have something that is more uh, updated and more current with a few more features. Okay. Okay. Further discussion? 
No, we, we did have some discussion, but we just yeah, didn't have a final. I don't think we had the specific We didn't have bid. the bid in hand, final so bid in I hand. just wanted yeah. to make sure we covered that one more time. No, we can't. Just as a clerk. All right. Roll call, please. Lily Powell. Aye. Rudy. Aye. Lundstedt. Aye. Mauer. Aye. Ransor. Aye. Arthur. Aye. Hansen. Aye. We do have one in the other category. Uh, there was an extensive, uh, an extensive discussion of trash removal uh, at our uh, F and F meeting. Is there an update? Uh, We're turning it over to Mr. Middleman. As ah, he's negotiating. Councilor, where at are the, we? Uh, at the committee meeting, you'll recall that uh, we had some discussion. I was given some direction, um, just to, to reiterate. We had a bid. A uh, company called Facility Environmental Management FEM at the contract. They subcontracted the actual hauling to a company called Lakeshore Waste Services. The bid that they put in was $165 per pull, which we believe included four tons of garbage with each pull. They s said no, although Jess had confirmed that was the, the terms of the bid. So at some, you know, shortly after the the bidding got, or the uh, actual contract went into effect. Lakeshore said, we're not getting fully paid. So we had a meeting after the board gave me some direction. I talked to the owner of FEM and um, she agreed that we would terminate the contract. She has not returned the uh, agreement to terminate the contract to me or to Yaz. Um, Lakeshore has continued to provide service, but it obviously expects to get paid for their services over and above what we believe the contract uh, provides. So I am recommending that notwithstanding the fact that we haven't gotten the return of the termination, the board approve, terminate the contract, because basically we've been told by Lakeshore, we're not gonna pick up your trash unless you pay us more than the contract provides. So it's a change in the contract terms because of the bidding statutes. We can't just agree to do that. We're going to have to put it back out to bid. Jess has got that going. Um, so I'm asking the board to authorize the termination of the contract with FEM, the uh, putting it out for bid, and um, and then once we get the new bids, having a new contract for the waste home. Like a motion to terminate I would. the contract. Okay, I make a motion that we terminate the con contract, contract with, with facilities FBM. environmental management. Facil facilities environmental management. Second. Question. Arthur. Aye. 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 Aye.